Anchor 12, live out and share the hope I now have. Friends, the mission of Encounter is to help broken and hurting people overcome life's adversities so they can discover the free, devoted life to Jesus Christ. Our signature verse is from Hebrews 6.19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And our four pillars of encounter are discipleship, recovery, evangelism, and community. Anchor 12, the key verse there is found in 1 Peter 3.15. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. This is what Anchor 12 is all about telling others about the goodness of God and how he has changed your life. At Encounter, the key to really recovering from any adversity or hurt in your life is to know God and to make his word the authority over your life by embracing and living out God's discipleship plan for your life. Again, we've been learning this scripture, John 8, 31. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So if the Son of God sets you free, you will be free indeed. And when you surrender your life to the lordship and leadership of Jesus Christ and make God's word the authority over your life, gratitude is the driving factor in your heart motivating all your actions. Gratitude compels you to spend the rest of your life getting to know the creator of the universe who created you for his pleasure and his purposes. Gratitude compels you to live out a life of surrender and humility. It's a life of putting other people first. It's a life of sharing the hope you have with a lost and dying world with no hope. And as you apply all 12 anchors, you'll discover that if you want to get close to God, you have to learn how to run errands for the Holy Spirit. Those errands are always about being prepared to share the hope that you now have. You see, God is the great recycler of pain. And when you go through this encounter study, like so many of you have in full surrender, God will take your pain, heal you and set you free and make you a trophy of his grace. Living out these 12 anchors not only changes your eternal destiny, but it also changes you for the rest of your life. And it sets you up to experience what heaven on earth really means, how God helps you overcome your adversities and your adversaries when you allow him to lead and guide your life. He helps you to cope better, respond better to the things and people that have caused you problems and pain in your life. Sometimes he changes the situation. Sometimes he, cha sometimes he changes you and makes you better and sends you back in those situations so that you can know how to deal with them better. He allows trouble to come your way so that you can help someone else going through the same troubles you have overcome and gone through. He will use your pain and he will give you a ministry to help others. It's God's pathway and prescription for continued healing and growth when we say yes to always being prepared to give an account of the hope that we now have. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. You see, sharing your struggles, your celebrations, your hope in a safe community with with others can bring great healing in your life. And once you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, your gratitude compels you to want to tell the world about him and what he has done for you. You want others to encounter God and have the kind of life-changing experience that you have had with him. Evangelism involves telling others God's story through sharing your own personal story of how he has transformed your life and given you hope. It is allowing God to rewrite his story in your story and making your story his story so that you can tell others the greatest story ever told about how much God loves us through his son, Jesus Christ. When you spread the gospel, the easiest way for others to see and know that it is real and true is to see how it has changed changed your life. When you are truly transformed by God and your life reflects those heart, mind, and soul changes, people will take notice and start asking questions. The most effective and important way to share the hope you now have is by looking at the life of Jesus and following his example of leadership of how he invited others to live for him. It's the Jesus model of leadership where he invites us to come and see, follow me, then go and tell. Jesus invites us to come and see what life with him is all about. 
Come and see what grace is. Come and see what forgiveness is. Come and see what eternal life is. Come and see what salvation is. Come and see what the abundant life that I died for is all about. Come and see what miracles are all about. Come and experience healing. Come and see what freedom looks like. Come and see what real joy and purpose in life is all about. See, the invitation was just not for the disciples. The invitation is for each and every one of us here. Jesus invites you to come and see and see how great and awesome life with him can be and how your life will be changed forever if you follow him and allow him to lead your life. Now, once you've tasted and seen the greatness of the Lord, how good he really is, he extends another invitation. Now he invites you to follow him. He invites you to die to your old self and your old ways and to follow him. He knows it won't be easy for you, for you or popular by the world standards, so he sends you the power and person and work of the Holy Spirit to help you follow him in his strength and his power, not your own strength and power, and he invites you to pick up your cross, deny yourself, forsake your life for the abundant eternal life filled with purpose, power, and hope, and he invites you to crucify your old self, your selfish motives and desires, your human instincts, your earthly goals and ambitions, your passions your shame, your regrets, your mistakes, your pain, your disappointments, your strongholds, your fears, your insecurities, and anything else that would keep you from thinking and acting the way Jesus would think and act. And Jesus invites you to be his friend. See, God's word tells us that to be a friend to this world is to be an enemy of God. James 4, 4 says, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Well, what does that mean? It simply means that you can choose God or you can choose the world. But your choice matters here and now for eternity. And it's the difference between incorporating God into your life or making him your life. You see, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And leaving a part of your life out with God, if you do that, you take the chance of being taken out by the enemy of your soul. See, when Jesus invites you to follow him, he invites you with an all-inclusive invitation. His arms are open wide. He wants all of you. All of the time, not just some of you, some of the time. Why does he want all of you? Well, besides the fact that he adores you and he wants to be in a loving relationship with you, the main reason Jesus wants all of you is because God's, it is God's best plan for your life. God went all in for you by sending his son Jesus to save you and he desires an all-in response from us. It's the only way you'll ever truly experience victory and freedom in your life. Now, finally, Jesus invites you, after you follow him, to go and tell. Once you come and see and follow him, Jesus gives us more than an invitation. He gives us a command to go and tell others by spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God doesn't give you an option. He doesn't say, do it only if you feel comfortable doing so. No, he commands that you go and tell the world. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of age. See the Great Commission? Not a church initiative or a command just for disciples. We are commissioned and commanded to spread the good news and make disciples. See the goal? is to take as many people to heaven with you as possible. And God has allowed you to be, a, to be a part of spreading the gospel so others can know him and be in heaven with him for eternity. What an awesome thing to be able to follow Jesus and follow God's commands. Have you ever thought about what giving yourself away for the cause of Christ would look like? It's just giving freely of your time to others sharing your healing with others by telling them your story, sharing the wisdom God has taught you with others, sharing the knowledge that you have gained. Ultimately, it's about sharing the greatest news in the world, Jesus, that Jesus saves and he changes us and he makes us new. And when you live out the great commission, you serve others and you do it freely and you do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, you always consider others better than yourselves. You help others less fortunate than you are. You walk alongside someone who's struggling with similar pain or hurts that you have struggled with. 
or maybe even still struggle with. You give freely to others with an attitude of gratitude because Jesus has given his grace freely to you. You are thankful and you're filled with hope. You open up your heart, your wallet, and your life to support God in his agenda and you lay your own selfish agenda at the foot of the cross and surrender it to God so that his will can be done in your life. Acts 20, 24, again, my life verse. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. The Apostle Paul was very clear on communicating what his assignment was and how important it was for him as a servant and follower of Christ. And when you go and tell, you may be the only Bible someone will ever hear. You So make sure that you are a good translation. Be spirit-filled, be humble, be led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was also pretty clear in the Bible when he said in Matthew, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But anyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. You see, Jesus' ministry and death were public, and he died for the world to see, and he wants your faith to be public. And he wants you to go and tell others about the hope that you now have. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are God's workmanship, his masterpiece. You were created to go public with the gifts that God gave you and the mission God planned for you thousands of years ago. Whether you realize it or not, you are a walking translation for the hope that you now have. You are giving answers to a world that has questions. And the manner in which you live communicates the hope for which you live. And people around you are watching and they're asking. So are you emulating a life that has hope? A life that loves and lives like Jesus. A life that is led by the Holy Spirit. See, people don't care about how much about how much you know. They want to see if you are willing to live out your beliefs and convictions. They want to see if you're willing to live out what you know when the pressure is on. When the heat is turned up. When the storm is raging. When the battle and struggle is real for you. People want to see how you handle adversities, setbacks, and disappointments. They want to see what your answers are for the hope that that you now have. So what kind of answers are you giving? Are you communicating well and accurately? Because the hope that you now have lives inside of you. And at Encounter, the goal is that you would get better despite what happens in the world around you and despite what happens in your life. The goal is to help you become an overcomer. Overcomers invite others to come and see and share the hope that they now have. Living out the Encounter 12 anchors of hope will help you give an answer for the hope you now have. See, if you come and see what knowing and loving God is all about, it will give you an answer. And if you follow Jesus, it will give you an answer. If you go and tell others about God, what he has done for you, it will give an answer. Bobby Conway said, there are five Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Christian. But most people never read the first four. What kind of gospel and translation again are you? By applying the 12 anchors of hope to your life, your life is now different. You're not the same anymore. You are different than when you first started this journey. You made the decision to get well and realize that you do a terrible job at playing God. You now have a hope and a firm foundation by which to live your life. You made the decision to accept God's love through his son and are trusting in the finished work of Christ. You realize what your new and true identity is in Christ. You got honest about your past so you can become God's best version of you. And now in the future, your past is now your past. You decided to become a disciple by allowing God to make the transformation changes he wanted to make in your life. You closed your accounts with others by forgiving them and as a result experienced the peace and healing of God. You've allowed God's word to become the authority over your life. You decided to make prayer a priority and grow your relationship with your Father in heaven. You are now armed for spiritual battles by getting dressed daily 
by putting on the armor of God and learning how to take your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. You now trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. And as a result of living out all these anchors of hope, your mission in life is to share them anywhere with anyone no matter where God sends you, no matter what the cost. St. Francis of Assisi once said, you should preach at all times, but sometimes use words. That doesn't mean that you, should, you shouldn't speak. It means that the way you should live your life should speak even more louder than your words, and that your words should represent a life well lived. So be a good translation so people can appropriately interpret the hope that you now have. See, you can choose to be selfish, or you can choose to be a servant. And you either have a mindset of what's in it for me or one of how can I share this good news with others. Overcomers share their hope and healing with others. You now know where hope can be found. Share it with others so that they too can have the hope that you now have. Invite them to come and see, follow Jesus, and go and tell. So thanks again for doing these 12 anchors of hope. I trust that God has met you in this journey. And I trust that you've had daily encounters with the God of all hope, who loves you, who has never stopped loving you, and your life is changed as a result of it. Now, go give it away, share it away, and bless other people with the hope that you now have. God bless you.